Let's open our Bibles together, please, in the book of the Psalms, Psalm 37. I want us to follow the reading of God's Word today, and may the Lord bless us as we take His Word to heart. And we commence reading there at verse number 1, Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Show self thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way on to the Lord, trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. <coughs> and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. And forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And we know that God Himself will add His blessing to the reading of His precious word for Jesus' sake. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, I thank Thee for Thy precious word this morning. Lord, I pray that <coughs> Thou will bless Thy word to the hearts of Your people. We pray that our God, that as we open the Scriptures today, that we might listen to what Thou dost say. That, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, that we'll not only listen with our ears, but listen with our hearts. But Father, we thank Thee that we find encouragement from Thy Word. We find strength from Thy Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And Father, Thou knowest that as we walk through this sinful world, the path at times it seems so dark, but we thank Thee there's a light and lamp there. And I pray that Thou will guide us as we walk through this life. Give us, our God, the guidance that we need. We thank Thee for the words that we've been singing, burdens are lifted at Calvary. And Father, we confess today that many of Your children are carrying heavy burdens. But we thank Thee that there's a, an answer for their hearts today. Cast Your care on Jesus today. Leave Your worry and fears. For burdens are lifted at Calvary, for Jesus is very near. Lord, many of Your people say they believe that. And yet, Lord, they don't live their lives as if they do. Please forgive our unbelief and our doubts and our worries. Lord, we pray that you'll guide us through thy word this morning. Just help us to be willing walkers in the pathway that you've set before us. Obedient to your will. I pray this in Jesus' precious name, for Jesus' sake, and for his glory alone. Amen. I've been thinking fresh of this 37th Psalm that the Lord has directed my attention to, and we commenced a little study on last Lord's Day morning, and I confess before the Lord that I believe with all my heart that our lives can change if the truth of this Psalm really grips our heart. I believe our lives will be different. If the tremendous truth that is found here was able to sink into our hearts, and what God tells us to do, if we're only to do it, that God would change our outlook on life. And instead of seeing life always as darkness and disappointment, to see the Lord 
as the one who's in absolute sovereign control. As we open this passage of God's word last Lord's Day morning, we notice the Spirit of God says, fret not thyself. There's the command or the psalmist's advice or the psalmist's command. He says, fret not thyself. Now, of course, the psalmist is the pen man. It's the advice of the Holy Ghost. I go further. It's not the advice of the Holy It's the command. Because this is not advice. This is a command. God says this, fret not thyself. And if we think it's only advice, then is thou shalt not steal. Is that just advice? No, it's not. It's a command. Honor thy father and mother. Is that advice? No. It's a command. And so God has commanded us here, and it says we're not to fret ourselves. Now, to be honest, as we look around us, what was making the psalmist fret? What was making God's people fret? It was the prosperity of the evil man. It seemed to be that life was swimmingly good for the ungodly man. Everything seemed to be going the ungodly man's way. He was having a heyday and God's people were going through trials and and troubles and afflictions and all of these things. It was as if that God wasn't in charge at all. And so the psalmist was saying under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, listen, child of God, fret not thyself. Don't get yourself worked up or heated inside or burns inside or to fume against the evildoers. Neither be thou envious. In other words, what it means there is the fire of jealousy burning within your heart whenever you see the, 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 the workers of iniquity getting away with it as far as it seems to be in the natural eye. Now God says, don't you get worked up because it says in verse 2, for they shall soon be cut down. I said last Lord's Day morning, the word soon doesn't mean immediately. But it does mean suddenly. It means they're suddenly cut down. And so therefore you leave it with God. You put it into God's hand. God's scythe is sharpening today. The glory of the wicked man shall soon disappear. And I'll tell you the end of the evil man, friend. I can assure you, it's not to be envied or desired because death will strip the wicked man of everything. He'll take the last thing from him. So, what we said last Lord's Day morning was we're not to fret ourselves because fretting was futile. And listen, worrying about a thing doesn't change it. And yet, don't we all do it? We got ourselves all worked up. Now, I don't know what faces me this week, and I don't know what faces you. But I do know this. God does. God does. And you and I worrying about what is going to happen tomorrow, what is going to happen next week, is not going to change next week. It doesn't make my situation better. It doesn't solve my situation. That's a fact. It makes it worse. Because all of that worry just drives me down. Doesn't lift me up. Doesn't help me through it. Just puts me into deeper despair. And so the Spirit of God is commanding us, listen, child of God, fret not yourself. When you see all of the, the wicked man, well, don't you get all worked up about that? Can you not leave it with God? You know, not only is it futile to fret, we said this last Lord's Day morning, it's faithlessness to fret. Oh, you know, we proclaim on the one hand that we are heirs of God and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and yet we act as if we're orphans. As if it's somehow God's forgotten us. As if this week, whatever we have to face, we're going to have to walk it alone. 
And that's not true. God's child never walks alone. Because God says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And so the Spirit of God gives us this command, first of all, but doesn't leave it there, because the Spirit of God gives us the other side of the command. You know, sometimes people say, ah, don't worry. They put their arm around you. And it's nice that somebody's caring enough to do that, but they say, don't worry, and they just leave it there. That's not what the Spirit of God does, friend. That's what the Spirit of God tells us. Go to the next verse. He says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Yes, it tells us here we're to trust in the Lord. In other words, we're to put our confidence in the Lord. Here's the secret of everything. Trust in the Lord and do good. You know, I hear people say this. You know, I'd just be as well to do the evil. I'd be as well to just do what they're doing. You look at there as a person, let me tell you this, and they're doing the double and they're, my, they're, 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 they're cheating their way and my, they seem to be prospering. And I pay my taxes and I try to work and I try to get up in the morning and and try to put myself through all of this here and pay my way. And so look, I seem to be getting it worse. And look at them. Everything's going swimmingly for them. I just be as well to do the evil just like them. What's that? What does it go say in verse 3? He says, Trust in the Lord and do what? Evil? Stoop to the devil's way? Not at all, friend. He says, do, the, do good. Do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. And you'll find that the secret of all of this, my friend, is this. What I'm going to say after this is, here's the secret of it. Trust in the Lord. There's the secret. Your relationship with God. The word trust there is, to be confident. I think as we finished last Lord's Day morning, I said, that doesn't mean that we're, you know, people say, well, does that mean just hope that everything's going to turn out right? Somehow it'll all work out? Is that what it means to trust in the Lord? Well, let's just see how it all, no, no, friend, that's not what it means. The word trust there There has to be an expectant, earnest expectation. There's an earnest expectation that counts upon the sovereignty of God to work all things together for the good of his people. God who controls all things for his people. You can trust him. What it means is God's dependable. You can depend upon the Lord. You can fully rely upon the Lord. Even when life is saying to you, there's no use. I've had people say to me, preacher, what's the use? I've tried to live right and have seemed to be getting nothing else, only knock after knock after knock. Preacher, what's the use? And friend, their heart's driven out of them. And they've lost confidence. And men and women, I'm not asking you to be confident today. I'm asking you to trust God. Have your confidence in the Lord. It's easy to say when everything's going well. It's easy when you're at the top of the mountain to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And before the night's out, you meet that person, let me tell you, and they're walking and their heads down, and their bellies touching the ground as if God had died during the day. No, my friend. That's not what it says. It says trust in the Lord. You can trust God. Be confident in the Lord. 
David is talking about difficult times here. The road's rough. The winds of adversity are blowing here. But trusting believers trust God for everything. For everything. Knowing this fact, that with God there is always a purpose. With God there is always a sovereign purpose and plan for him. And my experiences of life are guided by a wise and a sovereign and a loving God who is in absolute control. You know, I may not understand what's happening to me. But God knows what, knows what he's doing. Child of God, do you really trust him like that? When you can't see the way ahead, can you honestly say, I, I, I'm trusting the Lord. Whatever faces me this week, I'm going to trust the Lord. Are you really? Let me tell you, my friend, you should feed your soul upon God's faithfulness. We read this morning, turn back to the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 8. We have a faithful God, friend. A faithful God. That's why you can trust him. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, listen, feed your soul upon God's faithfulness to Israel in the wilderness. Listen. There was nothing that happened to God's children in the wilderness by chance. God was working out his plan. God was working out a sovereign purpose for the good of his people. Let's turn to verse number verse number three. It says this. And God says, He humbled thee. Or let's go back to verse two. Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness. Lord, why did you do it? Why did you lead us this way? Why did you take us down into the valley experiences? Why did you face certain situations? God says, I did it to humble thee, to prove thee. To know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee. And he suffered thee to hunger. Notice what it says in that verse. Just don't pass over it, friend. Don't take any of the word of God lovely. Listen. And he humbled thee. He suffered thee to hunger. See, there's not only the permissive will of God, but overall there's the sovereign will of God. Yes, God permits things in our lives. But God sends things in our lives. God directly sends things into our lives. God permitted the devil to do what he did to Job. But the word of God says this. He suffered thee to hunger. He fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. And then he said this in verse 4, Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Forty years, friend! And they never changed their footwear. God says your feet didn't swell in the 40 years. He says your garments, they never waxed old. Ladies would not be good. You would have not go back into the shop again. They never waxed old. God provided. Yes, the raiment was sufficient. It was sufficient. And I believe this morning what you and I need to do when we come to this trusting of the Lord and have confidence in God, we need to feed our souls upon the faithfulness of God to Israel in the wilderness. Those 40 long years, friend, 
God never failed them. Never failed them. And I want to tell you, notice the lesson. He never failed us. He's the unfailing God. And I direct to you passage after passage of God's word. Let me just mention some of them quickly in passing, friend. Listen, feed your soul not only in the faith of God to the children of Israel in the world. Feed yourself, your soul this morning upon the faithfulness of God to the widow of Zarephath. Do you remember the prophet in 1 Kings, in chapter 17, Elijah the prophet? And God takes Elijah the prophet and he takes him from the brook where the water runs dry. And in the sovereign purpose of God, friend, the brook ran dry. God was leading his servant. God was taking him the next step. God was leading him on. And God took him to the city of Zarephath and there was a wee widow woman there and she got a son. And she had a barrel of meal and she had a cruise of oil. And one day, she looked into the barrel. And when she looked into the barrel, she said when she took out one little, one little handful of meal and she saw there was only one little handful left. It was finished. And I can see her taken. She said, you know, when I come back this next time, there's nothing more. She thought of her son and have nothing more to give him. And she had only a little oil in the cruise, friend. And when she used it the next time, it was over. Yet you know what God did? God sent a man into that woman's presence. And he said to her, he says, I want you to bake me a cake first. And then for thee and thy son. And she turned to him. And she says, I've only a little, just a handful of meal. That's all I have. So I've left. And then it's over. But you know, he said, nevertheless, First Kings chapter 17. I think we should read this. End of verse 10. Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. She said, As the Lord, thy God liveth, I'm not a cake, but in a handful of meal in a bar, a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it, and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, and make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it to me. And after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Look at verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. Listen, friend. Do you remember that day when she walked in and she saw that she'd only got one little handful left? And all she could think of. And then we die. And yet God said, a man says, make me a cake first. 
Was God mocking her? Can God be trusted, friend? This woman was in a hopeless situation. And yet God was providing for her. He sent the man of God not to take her last. Little cake. But we see the faithfulness of God. Feed your soul in the faithfulness of God, friend. To the woman of Zarephath. Go to chapter 18. Of the, or sorry, chapter 19 of the same book. And you'll find in the chapter 19 of the same book, after the great victory at Carmel, we find that Elijah the prophet is in a depression. He's come from the top of the mountain experience, and now he, he's down in a valley experience. In verse number 3, And when he saw that he rose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and he left his servant there. And he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. Have you ever felt like that? Just want to get away from everybody. Even your nearest and dearest, your faithful friends. And somehow, life's so exhausted that you just want to get away alone. You feel lonely. You feel that life's not working on. This was the man of God that was on the top of the mountain, laughing at the prophets of Baal. Short time before this. Won a great victory in the name of the Lord. And now he's down sitting under a juniper tree. And he's asking God that he might die. Tell me, how does God handle God's servant like that? See, Elijah was no different than you and me, friend. He was only human. Sometimes we put men up onto pedestals and we've got this idea, you know, these people... They should never feel the way I feel. They should never have experiences the way I have. And yet you find they're only human. The best of men are only men at best. That's why don't get your eyes on man, friend. Get your eyes on the Lord. He'll never disappoint you. Get your eyes on man. He'll disappoint. Get your eyes on God. He'll never disappoint. Praise the God that never fails. And it says here, verse 5, And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him. You know how good God is? How loving God is? I, I can see some people say, you know, if they're the metal you say, let you catch yourself on. Get up, be a man. Sitting down there. I can see how some of God's people would handle them. Give them a bit of a shake or a toe on the backside and say, get up and get going. Be careful, friend, when people's been in the heat of the day. Be careful how you handle them. Love them for Jesus. If a brother's going through a hard time, friend, you don't kick him. If a sister's facing a hard trial, you don't dismiss her. You treat them as the master treats them. And how did the master treat them? Look at it. And behold, an angel of the Lord touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals. And there was a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Read the passage, friend. Just go on. Read it this afternoon for yourself. What I'm saying is, feed your soul upon the faithfulness of God. And when you feed your soul upon the faithfulness of God to the woman of Zarephath, 
to the children of Israel in the wilderness, to Elijah sitting there under the juniper tree. Then what does the Holy Ghost say? Trust also in the Lord. You be confident in God. Get your eyes on him. You can trust me, says God. You can trust me. I brought them through. Read the story in Second Kings chapter 4. We read it last Lord's Day morning in our Bible reading about the woman. Do you remember that she had nothing to pay? It says, there, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditors come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. You know, the Lord can use anything, can't he, to meet the need? Sometimes we think that God has to use some big thing. Here was a woman, her back's against the wall, and creditors were coming in, and she just didn't know where to go. And where was she going to get help? And she goes to the man of God, and she said, listen, they're coming, they're going to take my boys. And they're going to make them slaves. Now he says, what's, what's in thine house? She said, I have nothing. Except a pot of oil. man of God says, that's it. That's the secret. You use what you have. Use what you have. You don't need somebody else's talent, friend. Use what you have. And so the prophet of God said, go borrow, verse 3, go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went out from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. And she came and told the man of God, and he says, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Could you trust God, friend? My God shall supply all your need. Oh, we could go on. Over and over again in the word of God, friend, God is able to do the same for you and for me. Let me tell you, he will not leave his promises short. Feed yourself upon the promises of God. Feed your soul upon the promises of God. Put your confidence alone. Listen, here's the words. Trust in the Lord. Trust him. Put your confidence in the Lord and do good. And very little I should be fed. And so that's the opposite to doing evil. Don't, don't let the devil ever encourage you, friend, to stoop to the devil's territory. Don't let the devil ever say you have to do what the devil's crowd does to get through. Trust in the Lord. God says, trust me. Have your confidence in the Lord. Be confident in the Lord. That's the first thought. And very quickly, and we're going to finish in a few moments. Listen, because we want to gather around the table of the Lord. Turn to that psalm once again, Psalm 37. And this is what it says secondly. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Not only are we to be confident in the Lord and do good, and verily thou shalt be fed, is God not leave you short. 
But we're not only to be confident, we're to be cheerful in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And when they looked on the luxury of the lives of the ungodly man, they felt depressed. They felt discouraged. They felt disappointed. They felt sorry for themselves. You ever felt like that? Look at them. Poor me. I got the short stick. The evil man is everything. He's got the desires of his heart. And the godly man who has kept God's law, it just seems to be as nothing but trouble. Why doesn't God intervene? Why doesn't God make it right for me? Is that what you're asking, saying? Listen to the command, friend. And we'll come to this. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord. In other words, God commands you and me, and I know this is not easy, but God commands you to be glad, not sad. God commands you to delight, not spite. That's the, that's the heart of the child of God. Why, friend? It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, because our delight is in a person. It's not in possessions. Where will we find real happiness? Delight thyself also in the Lord, which rejoice in him. And here's a little thought I want to leave with you. You see, friend, the word of God tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength. When you are happy in the Lord, God will make you strong in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Why? Because what happens is this. It lifts you away above your circumstances. You're lifted above them. You see, if all you get is your eyes upon your circumstances, you'll be sad and downcast and disappointed. But God lifts you above them. And here's the verse I want to close. Habakkuk chapter 3. And in that little book of Habakkuk, and chapter 3, it tells us there, as we finish, verse 17 to 19, I'm going to read this. And then we'll have to take it further again. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither fruit be in the vines, and the labor of the olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Is that how life is with you today? Just things, instead of getting better, it seems to be there. Cupboards are empty. Work's getting harder to get. See, preacher, the labor of the olive trees failed in the fields, yielding no meat, and the flocks are cut off from the fold, and there's no herd in the stall. What should I do now? Look at verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. There's the secret. I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hind's feet and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. In other words, I'm not going down into the valley of depression and so easily we can get our minds captivated by losses instead of having our joy in the Lord. And friend, let me tell you this. 
If your joy is in your things, then God can take them away. And I don't care who you are. God can just take the feet from an under you. But if your joy is in the Lord, God will bless you. God will give you strength. And God can make your feet like hinds' feet. And he can make you to walk on high places, even though there's no herd in the stall, even though there's no flocks in the fold, even though the labor of the olive tree shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. Why? Because I will rejoice in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And then it says this. It says, and I'll give you the desires of thine heart. You, go, you say to me, does that mean, preacher, I get all I want? Is this my way to bulge my pocket bulge him? And all I have to do is delight myself in the Lord, and boy, my pocket's going to be bulging. I'm going to get everything my heart desires. Listen, friend. Well, find out, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because I tell you, God didn't put it in there to mock us. God means what he says. But we need to understand what he says. Because if we take it out of context, don't charge God falsely. Don't try and make it mean what God didn't say. But God says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, may God touch our hearts today. Remember this. We have a faithful God. And no matter what we face, he never fails. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Thy goodness to us and for Thy love to us. We thank Thee for Calvary and for the precious blood. We thank Thee for the finished work of the cross. We thank Thee for a wonderful Savior today. We thank Thee of one who ever lives and makes intercession for us. We thank Thee one who is upon the throne today that the devil will never be able to dethrone. We thank thee that Satan to Jesus must bow. Hallelujah. We bless thee that all the powers of Satan have been destroyed at the cross of Calvary. We bless thee that we're to be more than conquerors through him that loved us. Help us not to go through this week disappointed. Help us not to go through this week our God discouraged, but help us, Lord, to delight ourselves in the Lord. Help us to trust you this week. Help us to trust you every day we rise. And as the night falls and we place our head upon the pillow, help us to trust you through the night hours. Watch over us and keep us safe. We pray in Jesus' precious name. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let's sing a verse of a hymn. And God's people are asked to wait around the table of the Lord. And to remember the Lord's death until the Savior come. When I survey the wondrous cross, 480, I'm going to stand to sing. And God's people are asked to join us around the Lord's table this morning, please. Let's stand to sing. When I survey.